Hi everyone, it's Charlie. We got a whole bunch of Avengers Endgame deleted scenes to talk about. Hopefully you've had a chance to see the movie by now. It's been out for a couple weeks. Based on the box office, most of the planet has probably seen it. So I'll start with the Iron Man stuff, but they also posted a clip of the Russos talking about a lot of other big deleted scenes that they cut out of the movie at the last minute. So I'll include that in the video too. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Marvel videos. There's a new round of that Infinity Gauntlet giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave an Avengers comment on the video. And it should go without saying that of course there's going to be way more deleted scenes when they release the Blu-ray later this summer. We don't have a release date for that yet, but yes, I am sure that there's going to be some giant box set with every single Marvel movie in it at some point. The Russos also talked about some X-Men and Fantastic Four stuff happening in the future. So what I'll do is I'll play the clip of them talking about all the other deleted scenes. Then I'll talk about all the X-Men Fantastic Four stuff. So here's that clip of them. You know, Lebowski Thor versus Buff Thor, presumably. <laughs> we did have that. We, we, did, we did, actually. There was, there was a sequence where they did couldn't finally confront one another in Asgard. And I can't remember exactly why we moved off of that. I mean, uh, I think maybe maybe it was that we I think were it just got overly complicated, and then we liked the cap versus cap better. But also, I think there we also deferred to you know the the the, the storyline between Thor and his mother was so resonant yeah. that we really wanted to run. That was really more a part of Thor's journey and repair than confronting his former self. Right. So that's really w what happened there. Why we flowed with that. Catherine Langford. What's the the bottom? What happened there? Was she ever? Was she going to be Cassie at some point? Was that no? Just, she was going to be uh, well. Um, what was that? Uh, th there was a there was that an was idea waste. that we had yeah. that, Tony. that Tony was going to yeah. go into the metaphysical way station that Thanos goes Remember into. Remember where Thanos saw his daughter? Uh, yes. When he snapped his fingers and that there was going to be a future version of his daughter oh. uh, in that way station. And it got... So that's Morgan grown up a bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We showed it to a test audience and it was really confusing. What we them. realized about it was we didn't have... We didn't feel an emotional association with his adult, the adult version of his daughter. Right. So we just it, it wasn't ringing to us and resonating with us on an emotional level, yep. which is why we moved away from it. So you shot it, it just did it. We, so. yeah. yeah, I mean the attention yeah. was that his future daughter, because these are the stones we're dealing with, so it was magic. His future daughter um, forgave him uh, and um, and sort of gave him peace to go. The idea felt resonant, but it just, um, it's just—it's just too many ideas in, right. a, in an overly complicated movie. I feel you have said that there was more to that battle, that there was some some more beats to it. Is there any 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 stuff that you missed about cutting from that final? There's always more beats to the battle. Battles traditionally at this scale, and then we try to pull them down to their essential elements. Sometimes when you get in the edit room, and start playing around with it, the structure doesn't sustain, or you find a better structure and a better path through it. And some beats you think are going to work don't work quite as well as others. And then there's um, there's sort of battle fatigue. So right. we had a lot of people on that battlefield. Yeah. Uh, so there, there were other... Including Howard the Duck, apparently. There were other <laughs> beats. I think there was like a, a Rocket and Groot reunion moment. There might have been an um, uh, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp reunion moment. But it just started to feel like an endless series of reunions yeah. where, you know, there are future movies coming and... Those moments can be had. Second choice for the name besides Endgame, there must have been. A, uh, well, it was Gauntlet, Infinity Gauntlet, for a long time. Uh, when we, when we, sh sorry, this is not too rapid fire, That's but okay. when we went to Korea to promote this movie, uh, the representatives from Disney there came up to us and said, um, "There's something we need to tell you." In in um, in the translation of Infinity War here in Korea, when Doctor Strange says to Tony. Uh, we're in the end game now. The, the way we translated that here was no hope. So we're like, oh, so I guess, so in Korea, is, our, is this movie called Avengers No Hope? Oh, <laughs> because it's well, uh, depressing. Jeez. It's not going to do that. <laughs> but uh, Infinity Gauntlet was the title for quite a long time, okay. actually.
So the Russos dropped a whole bunch of big bombs during that, but obviously the scene at the beginning of this was a longer version of the Iron Man Spider-Man reunion during the big battle before Iron Man used the Infinity Gauntlet. They're actually calling his version of the Infinity Gauntlet the Nano Gauntlet. They'll be selling that in stores pretty soon. The Russos talk about the Lebowski Thor versus Dark World Thor when he was in Asgard during the events of that movie. They cut that just because they liked the stuff that they were doing with Thor's mother more. I agree that was probably more important for his character during that moment, so it was a good choice. But for those of you that are asking about Thor stealing the hammer from that version of Thor, Captain America wound up taking it back when he took all the Infinity Stones back to where they stole them from. So eventually Dark World Thor wound up getting his hammer back. But the thing that really blew my mind was actually the Catherine Langford deleted scene. So Catherine Langford was rumored to be in the film. Everyone wondered who she was playing. Is she going to be someone's daughter, like a future version of someone that's part of the Young Avengers? Because we have the adult version of Cassie Lang, which was also a bit of a teaser for future Young Avengers stuff happening in the MCU. So it would just make sense that they include another adult female character like that. She's probably tied to one of our existing characters. But the way they explain it is, is that Iron Man snaps his gauntlet and it takes him into the soul world of the soul gem just like Thanos did when he snapped everyone last year in Infinity War and it was a way to make Iron Man feel okay about what he'd just done because he was very conflicted about leaving his family. Like he says during the film, I got my second chance cap but then obviously Pepper is the one that compels him to go, would you be able to rest if you did not help everyone? It was also kind of a version of that last scene that he had with Pepper where she's like, Tony, we're going to be okay. You can rest now. So it was another way to send that character off and also give you an idea about what's going to be happening with Morgan Stark in the future. Because obviously, Catherine Langford is a pretty notable young actress, so it makes sense that they try to bring her back in a future movie at some point. But if you're wondering about a future version of Iron Man or even Iron Lad showing up because the kid from Iron Man 3 was in the film, he even said, he's like, I would love to be a future version of Iron Man, but I'm not expecting them to do anything like that anytime soon. And remember, this version of Catherine Langford, the adult Morgan Stark, is say like 19 years in the future, so that's a long ways off, 19 years from 2023. So we're talking way, way off. I think the only way you see her show up in a Young Avengers movie is as if a team of Young Avengers in present day travels to the future and then they talk to her there. Then the Russos talk about the longer scenes with the bigger characters who had just come back from being dusted like Rocket and Groot having a reunion and then just deciding that they would cut that because they could do it during Guardians 3. Like, okay, there's a lot of reunions that these other characters will have in their own movies. Like, we don't need a whole lot of scenes with Black Panther or Doctor Strange because they're both getting sequels that we know about they've already confirmed. So they'll pick up with Black Panther and they'll address what happened in Wakanda in the last five years during the Black Panther sequel. And the same thing for the Doctor Strange sequel. We don't know exactly when those movies are going to come out. I'm assuming sometime 2022, but the Disney CEO said that they would reveal their official schedule later this summer, so no worries. We won't have to wait that long to find out. There was a much longer scene that they shot with the Avengers in the trenches during the battle where they're talking to each other about their plan of attack. They said that it slowed the battle way down, so they just cut it for time. They might put that on the DVD too. But all the X-Men stuff that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, so the writers of the movie also did a bunch of interviews talking about stuff that they had to cut out of the film too. They said for a little while their plan was to use Scarlet Witch to change reality on a fundamental level using a House of M twist from the comics. Probably one of the biggest X-Men twists and uses of her powers that you could do. She's one of the most powerful Avengers so it makes sense that they would think about using her as one of these big focal points. As we all saw, things didn't go down that way, so they can always use that twist in a future movie. I wouldn't be surprised. They're doing the Scarlet Witch and Vision TV show, but I don't think they're going to do any House of M stuff during that. I think that'll mostly be them bringing Vision back to life, because obviously he was one of the few missing things during Avengers Endgame. So he can be repaired, they can bring him back, he'll be just fine. The writers of the movie also did address fans' questions about introducing X-Men and Fantastic Four using some of the big twists that they used during the film. At the beginning of the movie, Rocket talks about Thanos unleashing a blast of cosmic energy, the likes of which the universe has never seen when he snapped everyone. Then they detected the same energy signature when he used the gauntlet again to create his planet and destroy the Infinity Stones. At the end of the film, it happened for a third time when Iron Man snapped his nano gauntlet to get rid of Thanos and his forces. So there have been three giant blasts of cosmic energy in the universe, two of them happening on planet Earth within the last five years. So people are like, is this going to be the way that they introduce X-Men? Because just all that cosmic energy feels like it's going to have some repercussions. The way the writers explain it is that Kevin Feige already has the bones of a plan for introducing X-Men and Fantastic Four. And they're like, whatever he does, it'll be a big surprise. And it won't be in a way that people expect. Uh, in Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, the trailer that was released this week mm. establishes that the snaps 
ripped a tear yeah. into multiple different multiverses, different Ooh. universes out there. Is it possible that it also spread radiation that created mutants, and this is how we could get the X-Men in the Listen, we didn't know that it ripped a hole in anything. You didn't. I oh. saw that trailer like everybody else and went, huh. Okay, yeah, yeah. anything's possible, but I don't know whether really whether you'd need that. I mean, genetic mutation is genetic mutation; just happens. <laughs> Maybe they're already out there. I don't. Know. I do think that uh, whenever Kevin decides to do X Men or Fantastic Four, it's going to be. It, it won't be how you think it's going to happen. You yeah. know, I think he's yeah. going to have a real clever version of it. So I just interpreted that as them saying, no, that's not us introducing X-Men and Fantastic Four to the MCU. Kevin Feige is going to do something a little bit different, but it'll still be really, really cool. So what'll happen is, is there's a whole bunch of other details about the movie and deleted scenes they've been revealing the last couple of weeks. We keep learning more and more. So I'll just continue to do videos as we learn about really cool stuff. I'll leave all your requests in the comments below. Obviously, the last couple of episodes of Game of Thrones are happening, so I'll be doing videos for that. And then I just did a trailer video for the Watchmen TV series that's starting this fall. So there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up later this year that's going to be really cool. So as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you'll see all the videos when I post them. But what'll happen is, is I'll leave the giveaway open till I post my next Marvel video, and my Game of Thrones Episode 5 video will post later tonight. While you wait for everything, click here for all those teasers for Marvel Phase 4 during Avengers Endgame, and click here for all my Avengers Endgame Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Every